Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do shirring. Now, shirring is a gathering technique, which you can see a couple of examples right here. And what's nice about shirring is you can add stretch to fabric that normally has no stretch using elastic thread. So in this one up here, I used cotton fabric and here I used a silky fabric. So it's a really great decorating technique that you can add to skirts, shorts, or any type of dress or clothing that you want to add it to. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to need to do is prep our fabric. So fabric wise, I think the best thing to use is lightweight fabrics. So you can use uh, cotton, uh, definitely there's a lot of selection there making cute tops and dresses out of that. You can use knits, just something that's not too heavy because we definitely want it to gather and the heavier the fabric, the harder it is going to be for it to get that effect. So here I have my fabric, the right side is facing up and I'm going to go ahead and use my chalk or fabric marker to start drawing my lines, which you can see I've already started here. So I'm just using my little plastic ruler and my chalk or my pen and I'm going to go ahead and draw my line so I can see it on the right hand side. And the distance between the lines is really up to you. You can go anywhere from a quarter of an inch to an inch I would say. Now you just have to remember, the further apart your lines are, the less that it's going to get that uh, gathered look. So the closer they are, the more it's going to gather. This is about an inch apart, so I'm going to show you both extremes. I'm going to show you a little bit further apart, and then I'm going to show one where I did a quarter of an inch. So you can see the difference, because if it's wider apart, it's going to get more of a wavy look. So once you have your lines, we can move on to the next step. The next thing we're going to do is prepare our bobbin. So here is a spool of elastic thread that I picked up at my fabric store and I found it in the section where they sell the elastic, not with the thread. So if you have trouble finding it, check the elastic aisle. So what we're going to do is hand wind our elastic thread onto our bobbin. So I'm not using a bobbin winder and I think the reason for that is it perhaps it's going to stretch it too much as it's winding it on there. So it's better to do it by hand. Now we're going to have the elastic thread in the bobbin section and then have regular thread on top of the machine. So you don't have to worry about putting this on your machine itself, it's just going to be in the bobbin. So I'm going to make sure that when I wind my bobbin, you're going to start it the same way as you would any other thread. So if you need to put it through a hole in your bobbin, then go ahead and start it like that. Mine is a drop in bobbin so I don't have that, I'm just going to go ahead and wind it. And so let me see if I can start this here. You're going to do it as neatly as you can. So you're going to hold it tightly. You're not stretching it, just tight. And then you're going to wrap it on as neat as possible. You definitely don't want it to be too loose that it's going to look like this because then that's just going to get messy. And the machine definitely has an easier time if it's done neatly. So I'm probably going to fill it three quarters of the way full and then we're going to go to the machine so we can start sewing it. Once you have your elastic bobbin in your machine, you go ahead and just bring it out as you normally would with any other thread and you thread the machine as normal. So now we're going to get ready sewing this. I'm going to start at one of my lines here. And I have my machine on the basting stitch, so you want to do a pretty large stitch when you do this. And I'm not going to do any back stitching because I'm going to hand do my knots at the end. And you'll notice that the first one that you do, it's not going to gather as much as you think. first one never really looks that impressive, but the more stitches you do parallel to that, the more it'll start to gather. And if you're wondering, well, how much fabric am I going to need in order to make a skirt or a dress or anything like that? Usually a good rule of thumb is you're going to want the width that it's going to go around, so if, if the Gathering is going to go around your waist. You're going to do one and a half to two times that. If you want to play it safe, just do two times whatever that width is and then whatever length you want. So that's how you figure out how much fabric you're going to need. So now I'm going to get to the end of this. And again, I'm not going to back stitch. I'm going to take this out. And then I'm just going to start on my next one. And I'm just going to stitch all this and then I'm going to show you how to knot it at the end. So I do all of them at the same time. So I'm going to start at my next row and just do the same thing. Now when, when it starts to gather up, you're going to want to make sure that you pull your fabric so that it lies flat when it's going underneath 
your foot. We don't want to cause any puckering or wrinkles or anything like that. So if you need to, just pull your fabric so it goes flat underneath your foot as you're stitching it. I flipped my fabric over to the wrong side because now we're going to be tying our knots. I'm going to use a straight pin to help me. So here's the wrong side. Here's my elastic thread. I want to bring my top thread, which is my regular thread, to the wrong side of my fabric. So I'm just pulling it through. And then I'm going to take both of them together and tie a knot. So they're knotted together. So all I'm doing is doing a loop and then bringing the ends through the loop putting it as tight as I can to where my stitching starts. So I'm just gonna pull this. You can see I already did one right here. So I'm gonna do that for all my ends. Now you can notice, uh, especially on this stitch right here, that it kind of does a little wiggle. And that's normal. My tension for doing these stitches was just my normal tension that I normally use for when I'm sewing cotton, so I didn't really change anything. If you notice that you really cannot pull your bobbin thread through, like it's really, really tight, you may need to adjust your bobbin tension, which I don't have that on my machine, so you're definitely gonna wanna consult your uh, manual for your machine if you find that you are having trouble doing this type of a stitch. And that may need to be loosened a little bit on your bobbin. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tie knots to all of these, and then what we're gonna do is go to our ironing board so we can do a little pressing. All right, next I'm gonna get my iron extra hot because I wanted to have it at the steam setting. And if you don't have a steam setting on your iron, you can just get a, a little squirt bottle and you can just kind of spritz it a little bit instead. But I have my steam setting, so what I'm gonna do is, let's grab my iron here. I'm gonna do the steam and just put it down. And you'll notice that it should gather a little bit more. And then I just move on to the next section and press it down. And then the next section. So I'm not actually just moving my iron across the fabric because I definitely wanna have some more of that gathering. Just gently steam over the area that you want. And that's it, that's all you have to do. I just wanna point out the difference in the spacing of your lines. So this is the example I was just working on and the lines are one inch apart. This example over here, the lines are a quarter inch apart. So you can definitely see a difference in the closer your lines are, the more gathering you're going to have. So you definitely wanna take that into account when creating your project. I definitely prefer the, this look over here. Now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you a different way to also do your shirring. For this technique, I'm gonna be using a stitch called the bridging stitch. If you have it on your sewing machine, it's going to look something like this image here. Now, if you don't have the stitch, you can try to do this technique with just a regular zigzag stitch, but you may have to tighten the upper thread tension. I'm using regular all-purpose thread in both the top thread and my bobbin thread. So the elastic thread is not threaded through the machine at all. I'm also sewing on the wrong side of my fabric. So the wrong side of my fabric is up. You wanna make sure that if you need to mark your fabric so you have a line to follow, you do it on the wrong side since that's the side that we're gonna be looking at. What I'm gonna do is, you're still gonna use elastic thread. I'm just gonna lift my foot here, but you're gonna place it so it's right underneath your foot. And you can see I switched to my buttonhole foot and my elastic is right in that narrow groove there. Because what we're gonna be doing is, we're gonna be doing our bridging stitch, which is going to be stitching over the elastic thread. So it's gonna go back and forth over it and the elastic thread is gonna run right in the middle of that. So I'm just gonna hold everything in place just like I would a normal stitch. And then I'm just going to carefully start sewing, making sure that my elastic stays right in the middle there so it's being stitched over. I just wanna point out that I did not stretch my elastic thread as I was sewing it. I just let it lay flat and let the stitches stitch right over it. So there's no pulling. And I also did not do any back stitching. Like we did with our last example, we're going to hand tie 
our knots at the end instead of doing a back stitch. So just on one end here, I went ahead and brought my top stitch through to the other back side so all my threads are on the wrong side and I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot and I'm just going to do it on one side. Don't do the other side yet. You'll notice that you don't have any stretch to your fabric yet. So at this point, just tie one knot on one side. I went ahead and flipped my example around. So my knot is now on this side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the elastic on this side, just the elastic, not the other two threads, and I'm going to pull the elastic. And that's what's going to create your gathering. So you just pull it and then bring your gathering down so it's all evenly distributed. Now I kind of like this technique a little bit better than the other example, only because I get to kind of control on how much gathering I get. So once I have all the gathering I want, hold your elastic, don't let go or it might come undone a little bit. So after you finish gathering, just hold it. Then you're going to take your threads and your elastic thread Go ahead, tie a knot as close as you can to the fabric and you're going to cut it. And then once you have that, you can kind of distribute your gathering a little bit more. Now let's look at my example I have right here. So this one, I did three rows. And if you're doing more than one row, you're going to go ahead, stitch all three rows at the same time. Let's flip this over to the wrong side. You're going to tie your knots all at the same time and then do all your gathering at the same time. I'm just pointing out that I'm not going to go ahead, tie a knot, gather, tie a knot, gather, tie a knot, gather. Because it makes it difficult, once it starts gathering up, you're going to have to pull it in order to control it. So if you're doing all your rows at the same time, the same thing, it just makes it a whole lot easier. But this is another way that you can also do shirring. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 150 sewing video tutorials. New tutorials are released regularly, so make sure to subscribe to be notified of the next release. Thanks for watching!